What if I just started the video just like that one song from like 2008? Just be like, hey guys, welcome to my Minecraft tutorial. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. Or am I? <laughs> Create mod modular boiler thing. That that's what this video is about, dude. I I couldn't think of an intro. I'm sorry. So to start off, I want to briefly talk about how the scaling and levels work when it comes to heating the steam engines, as they can range from a level one boiler using a lava bucket, magma block, uh, campfire, just a very basic source, and they can be powered passively as a level one boiler for a tiny 2048 SU. Compare that to a absolute monster level 18 boiler using superheated blaze burners, which you can only get via feeding them blaze cakes, and that's a whole thing on its own. And that monster produces 294,912 SU. That's insane. Like I said, blaze cakes and all that jazz are not exactly renewable, so I'm going to be focusing on a much more renewable source of fueling our blaze burners, which is lava buckets via a dripstone lava farm. And you can see here my design is relatively small, and it produces a pretty decent 65,536 SU per segment, and is fully tileable in both the Z and the X axis, with a relatively small footprint per, for each one of just 8 by 4 This also means you can fit exactly 8 of these in one chunk, but I'm going to get onto how to tile them later in the video. But anyway, with that kind of brief look into the specs of how the boilers work and the my design here, uh, everything in this chest is what you're going to need to build it. So if you haven't already, pause here and collect these items so you can get right into the building. So with your resources now collected, you should be able to start building this thing. So I have measured out one chunk here. If you do F3 plus G on your keyboard, you'll bring up the overlay for the chunk board. Here. You can see I've just measured one out because uh, we're going to try and fit as many of these things as we can in a one chunk area. So to start with, we're gonna start off with how this thing's actually gonna be tiled, and that is chain drives and shafts. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four on the encased chain drive, and then we're gonna go one, two, a vertical gearbox, one, two, three, four. And then you, this should be eight blocks long because we should be able to tile another one here when the time comes. So next up is gonna be the bucket filling system. So we're gonna go on our third chain drive along, leaving a gap between the shaft and the thing here. And then we're going to apply a filter to this first one here with a lava bucket. I'm using filters right now because I'm getting a weird bug where like flat items don't render properly on these. So I've been using filters just to um, like show that there is actually a, a filter on it and it's not empty. Uh, and then on top of that, we're going to go a depot. We're going to come around to this side, place a hopper, a vanilla hopper facing into this depot here. And then another smart shoot on top of there with a filter for empty buckets. So basically what's going to happen is our mechanical arm, when we set it up, is going to deliver empty buckets to here. They're going to drop through onto this spout and only when onto this spout, onto this depot. And then they're going to get spouted with lava and then the lava bucket's going to wait here. Next up, we're going to place in the fluid tank. So we're going to go one, two, three, four blaze burners. Uh, but I'm actually... You know what? I'm not going to put the fluid tank in just yet. It's going to make doing the mechanical arm a little bit easier. Yeah, so like I said, we've now got everything we need to make this mechanical arm function. So we're going to set this up so it goes. It's going to deposit to the four blaze burners. And it's also going to deposit to the top smart chute and take from the bottom one. And then this is going to be placed here in this gap. And with all of that done, we can now place in our fluid tank. So we're going to go two by two and then two, three, four blocks tall. And we're also just going to pop our spout right there for now. This is a nice simple one. So that's just going to go above the depot there. All right, so next up, we're going to set up all the cauldrons for the lava farm. So we're going to go a two by four of pipes here with an extra two on the end. It's important that you put these two on the far side and not here on the interior side because we need stuff to go here to make this work. And then on top of these, of course, just some cauldrons. I believe this thing can actually run with just the eight cauldrons. I think two kind of cauldrons to one blaze burner is a decent enough ratio, but I had the extra space, so I've just thrown in another two here just to make sure it stays topped up completely with lava. And then from here, we're going to go one, two, and then a pump here, and then we're just going to try and connect this up to the spout. So we're going to go one, two, three, and up. Now, 
Uh, I am going to convert this one here to a windowed pipe. This shouldn't matter that this is ooh, pointing into the boiler here because it shouldn't put the lava into it. Ideally, I wouldn't have this like this, but it's fine. I've not seen it cause any issues. And this window here is just so we can see that this is the lava pipe. And to hook these up, we're going to do a combination here. So we're going to put a cog here which is going to power the pump, and then from the pump, we're also going to do two cogs like that, and that's also what's going to power our mechanical arm here. Oh, hey, that's neat. I didn't know you could do that. You can uh, hover over an arm with a wrench, and it will show you where it's serving. I did not know you could do that. Huh. That's cool. Okay. So next up is the water pipe here. So we're going to go one, we're going to place in a pump, one, oh, one, two, three, and then across to like this. Now, it's really important that you do this, otherwise this breaks the whole thing. You need to turn this pipe into a windowed one, otherwise the fluids of the lava and the water are gonna mix, and that's, that's not good. Bad things happen when you do that. Oh, and of course, if your pumps are facing downward, they're wrong, so you just need to flip these up. So they're facing upwards uh, when you kick this thing off. And then to power this one, just a cog there as well. And that's all the technical stuff done for this, really. Um, so next up, we just got to fill in our dripstone. You can use any solid block for this. I just like to use the actual dripstone block when I'm making these kind of farms, because I think it just adds to the look, I guess. But so we fill that in above the cauldrons, pointed dripstone below that. And then above here, I'm just going to use these framed glass trap doors to kind of create a lip around this. Uh, these do go outside the 2x4 area, so technically one could say it's not 2x4, but I, I don't count these. They're fine, because you kind of have to break some of these out when you tile it anyway. Uh, and then of course, lava buckets on top of that. I thought I disabled the day-night cycle. Did I not? Oh, I didn't even put the command in. <laughs> you know, what? I'm a real dum-dum. I forgot, like, the most important part. The steam engines, you know, the whole thing that makes this work. And, you know, of course, um, it helps if you put the water in the water pump. And there we go. Steam engine ahoy. So now you know how to build this thing, it's time to learn how to tile it. So when expanding horizontally, you've got to mirror this on the opposite direction. So, for example, our cauldrons will go a little something like this. There we go. And it'll be kind of flipped horizontally this way. There we go. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't put the filters on, by the way. This guy just goes absolutely nuts because it's trying to put them wherever it wants. So that, that's, that's why you got to set your filters up, right? And that is kind of like one module of this, and this will then produce double the 65k, so this will be producing about 130? I don't know what the exact number is. So now you've got both sides. The easiest way to do this is actually to just make a schematic. The schematic cannon is amazing in Create. If you don't want to use it, then obviously you can build these by hand, they're pretty simple, but honestly, just getting a schematic and making it build this for you, got to. Okay, we're going to save that. So, the, like I said, here we go. We've got our schematic here. So, we're just going to go bam. Print. 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 And you can see, obviously, we're having some spillage issues. <laughs> so, I'm going to just quickly fix this up real quick. And what I found I like to do is when I'm tiling them like this, I like to use... Um, glass rather than trapdoors, just because it feels a little bit more solid in the middle than anything else. Yeah, and then I'll do trapdoors on the end because then it's not as uh, bulky. Oh, I messed that up. Yeah, and then it should look something like this when they're all printed. I You need to make sure, though, that you put the water in for these because otherwise it does get a little bit of a pain to get in here to uh take the water out huh all right i'm gonna have a challenge here all right so a cool thing you could do with this if i just take off the creative motor from here a second you could probably make just one segment of this to power 
the rest of this, and then this here will be our main output. And I'm actually gonna, I'm just gonna link these up with some belts over the top. Just to make sure that the power network is shared between the entire thing. And there you have it, an infinitely expandable, infinitely tileable, both X and Z directions tileable steam boiler. I'm pretty proud of this one. I spent a long time coming up with a design for this. I'm sure it's not perfect. I have plans to carry on working on this in the future, and I definitely want to come up with a version 2, maybe a version 3. I'm going to keep working on this to see if I can make it more compact, more reliable, more simpler to build, and I'm just going to keep going with it. But as a attempt number one, I'm really pleased with this. You know, I actually want to see how much of this I can build before my computer breaks. This seems foolish, however, it would be really funny. I went too far, I tried to play God, ah!